not proceed with our meeting. Sergeant of Arms. Hello, Guard. Prepare to march on the colors. Sir. Can you all please rise?
Yellow guard, defile colors. Yellow <laughs> guard, dismiss. Yellow guard, we retire. Thank you. Can you all be seated now, please? <laughs> My name is Jerry Gray, I'm the president of the Warburg Beacon 205. So I'd like to welcome everybody here today and thank the peace of many of you as I can. During the program, a free will donation will be taken to me for many veterans. Following the program, a free lunch will be served and hopes that you take for that and for social life. So I'd now like to introduce our guests. The pastor Bob Vaught from the Alliance Church, Ann Hines on the piano, Sue Fraser on the bugler. Corporal Pearson from the RCMP detachment of Thorsby. Corporal Craig Berriger. Canadian Forces. Ruth Harrison. The Duke County Councilor. Rick Carstairs, Mayor of Warburg. And Thomas Darling Gray, Elder Northwest Command, Home of the Duke Commander. Now have the laying of the wreaths. She's got a little cubby hole there. You can shoot through.
time for us to recognize what has been lost and what has been gained. As Albertans and Canadians, we often take for granted the gift of freedom to participate in the current way of life, not realizing that life could have been different without the bravery of and sacrifices of generations past and present. For many of us, war is an event we view on television with battles fought in distant parts of the world. We are fortunate to be given the gift of peace on a daily basis. However, there are nations in the world who are denied this basic gift. As Canadians, our closest physical or emotional experience to war may be the finding of wartime memorabilia in the basement. For this, it is imperative for us to take the time and pay respect to the many men and women, our friends, neighbors and family who have given their lives in order for us to join ours today. On behalf of all the Duke County, let us all renew our pledge to remember our fallen. And in the words of Field Marshal Lord Plummer of the inauguration of the Menin Gate, a monument built where so many of the missing are known to have fallen. They are not missing, they are here, they are in our hearts, our thoughts and our prayers. <coughs> Thank you, Ruth. And now, have the hymn Onward, Christian Soldiers. Would you all stand, please? <laughs> Oh, 
today in which most of us are unaware of the numbers of wars that are going on around us all the time. It just seems that there are wars taking place that never hit the newspapers. If I were to ask you whether you believe that Canada is at war right now, some of you might wonder. But yes, we are at war over in Afghanistan. We also have a peacemaking role around the world. Movies and television tend to glamorize war. I remember way back when I was in high school that uh, they showed us old films that were produced for the purpose of recruitment for the Second World War. And we saw glorious scenes of victory and we heard the martial music and it stirred our blood. And there was something within our hearts that had there been a war on, we would probably all have marched out to sign up. I remember a little later in the class, our history teacher telling us, you know, it's all glamorous and it's all wonderful until you're standing on the front line and the first bullet and the first bomb comes in your direction. That's a true reality check. There's nothing glorious about war at all. Today I'm not here to glamorize or uplift war, but there are times when a, station mu when a nation must stand firm against tyranny and injustice. Not all nations in the world are peace-loving, and there are others, there are those who would subjugate others <coughs> and enslave them. And we can't live this life through rose-colored glasses. There are times when we must stand and be counted. Our veterans here today remind us of earlier conflicts, and I'd like to address the veterans for a moment. You heard the call of your country to defend the rights and freedoms of Canada, and you stood in the breach for us. And we want to say to you, thank you today. We don't just want to remember. <coughs> We want to express our appreciation for your, for your valor and for your gift to us. Some of you are reminded day by day from the memories that will never leave you. Some of you are reminded of the conflict you were in by the aches and the pains of your body. But you were steadfast and you were faithful, faithful to the task. We, you persevered and we thank God for you. The scripture reading that I read previously refers to a time, a day when there will be no more, there will be no more war. And there will be a day when we won't ask our sons and our daughters to stand in harm's <coughs> way or to sacrifice themselves to preserve freedom. The need for guns and bombs and swords will be passed. In fact, as we read the scripture, it speaks of a time when the Lord God will reign supreme and his ways will be followed with delight. May that day come soon. In the meantime, though, we are looking forward to living in peace. And that means adopting a more peaceful lifestyle. That also is described in the scriptures, and I'd like to read a short passage from Colossians 3 verses 12 to 17. It encourages us to adopt a peaceful lifestyle. Starting at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive each other their grievances what you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. <coughs> Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitudes in your heart to God. 
And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As individuals, we can seek to live with God's kingdom values now. We can acknowledge the authority of God and follow his teachings that lead to peace. The evil desires that may lurk within our inner recesses can be overcome with his help. We choose to live moral, pure lives. We choose to follow righteousness. And then we set aside those attitudes that cause many wars around us, like anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language. We can commit ourselves to truth and integrity. And as our lives show compassion and kindness and humility, we will diffuse the many wars that we encounter day by day, the wars that take place in our own families, in our workplace, and within our schools. <coughs> Gentleness and patience are endearing qualities of life. We choose to forgive completely. We bury the hatchet and we don't go and dig it up again. We seek to love one another. Instead of being quarrelsome and fractious, we look for ways to be united. Today is a wonderful example of the people of the Warburgan area gathering together in a common cause to, to celebrate a common memory and to be thankful for God's blessing of living in a community of peace and freedom. Today is Remembrance Day and we're called to remember. We express our thanks to those who sacrificed for us in past wars, some of whom are with us today. We express our thanks to those men and women who are standing in the gap even now as I speak as peacekeepers and in Afghanistan, Afghanistan and in the hot spots of the world today. We can choose to live a lifestyle to avoid the little wars that we might fight each day. The Bible says, as much as lies within you, live at peace with all men. Peace can become a way of life. Peace <coughs> can be our choice. And we look forward to that day, a day when God will put all wars behind us and peace will reign forever. Imagine that day for a moment when there will be no more guns and bombs and they're all melted down to make combines and farm implements to feed the hungry. Nobody will ever kiss their wife and kids goodbye for the last time. Nobody will kill or maim. Our prayer is, Lord, may that day come soon. In closing, I'd like to read another passage of scripture that speaks of the winding down of all time when the peace of God will reign supremely. And it's from the book of Revelation, and it's Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eye. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the order of things, the old order of things, has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it's done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. There's an opportunity for each person to make a choice, and one day we can be part of that enjoyable scene. May God enable us to prepare our hearts and live for that day. Thank you, Bob.
in Flanders Field. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow, between the crosses, roll on roll, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, <coughs> scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt no one, saw a sunset glow, loved and were loved. Now we lie in Flanders fields, <clears throat> take up our quarrel with the foe, to you, the failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you, if you keep faith with us and die, we sh shall not sleep. The poppies blow and find their fields. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Now we we'll have our. His own team commander, Darling Gray. Good morning, comrades, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be here today as we gather to remember. I bring greetings from command and our president, Bob Hanna. It's always gratifying to see so many turn out to join and help remember our comrades who gave their lives so that we may enjoy freedom and peace. It has been many years since World War I and World War II, and 51 years since the Korean conflict. This year marked the 60th anniversary of the Battles of Italy. One of the members of this branch, Comrade Lisa Berger, recently returned from a trip along with many other veterans, and they visited many of the battle sites. So many years ago, and I'm sure it brought back many memories. And I'm also <coughs> sure after the service, he would love to tell you all about his trip. Conflicts and ter terrorism still continue today despite our best efforts. That is why on Remembrance Day we take the time to remind ourselves of the sacrifices made to preserve our basic freedoms. More than 116,000 Canadians gave their lives in the cause of freedom and pursuit of peace. Remembrance Day represents a small token of this country's appreciation and respect for those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the causes of freedom and democracy. <coughs> It is important to remember this legacy left to us by previous generations of Canadians. Our nation will only be as good in the future as those people growing up today are prepared to make it so. We, the members of the Royal Canadian Legion, take our role in this regard seriously. And now more than ever, we need more members and recognition in the community to keep up this tradition. We will be there every year to make sure that at least once a year on the 11th of November, Canadians will be reminded of the sacrifice of the past that made our present and will contribute to our future well-being. Thank you. I want to thank you very much for asking me to do this. I'm not much of a speaker, so I don't know just how well I'll do, but this is much more pleasant, this trip over to Italy. I had some family with me. I wasn't on my own, but I kind of failed to see the, the pleasure of this trip when I got to, back to the battlefields. All I could kind of remember was seeing the boys laying out there in the rain and the mud. Some bleeding, some laying still beyond that, some screaming in pain, so I failed to enjoy the trip like it should have been. But I'll let Connie, my daughter, give you that. Some of the sites that we did go, Portona was one of the main ones that, where I left the battlefield on. It was two months before I got back to it again, and they were into the 
fighting at casino, the monastery, and whatnot. So I'll let Connie tell you some of the good parts. Um, it was just a great pleasure to see how well um, everyone was being looked after over there. The cemeteries are absolutely beautiful. Um, I wasn't able to make it to Karina, uh, Coriano Ridge <laughs> like I wanted to. Um, uh, it's, it's a beautiful country. Um, it was nice to see it in a, a pleasant and a, and a comfortable setting, not to know what Dad and the rest of the room went through. Um, if you ever get a chance, go to Italy and, and see some of these cemeteries because it's absolutely gorgeous. And we should be really thankful for what we have back here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day to remember. We thank you for the, the sacrifice that men and women made throughout our history. People who were willing to go and stand in the gap for freedom. And some of them are with us today. We pray for those who are with us today that you will give them strength as each day presents itself. We know there are memories that are sad, but they also can take heart in the fact that uh, in the battles that they fought, eventually we were triumphant, and we have peace, and we have freedom. And we say thank you to you, our God. We also say thank you to them, who were the instruments that brought that peace to us. May you bless each one of them in their days. And then we pray for those who are on the battlefield even now, that they will follow along in the tradition of the past, in bravery, in confidence, and we pray that you will help them through their difficult times and protect them. May they make a difference for world peace. We also ask that we might never forget, that we'll always remember, that there was a cost for our freedom and others were willing to pay it, and if it comes our time, may we be just as willing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We all rise. We all say the Queen. sing song now after this here is while we set up the table for the lunch and that so if anybody wants to join in feel welcome <laughs>
Bogotá que no mejor presiden destruye la banda Ora pensi nel destroie la vata, la vata, yamme, yamme, hoppa yamme, 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 hoppa yamme, yamme. Questo è l'amore che io posso dare per te. Sì, tu mi ami, come se fossi per te un vero re. Mai, mai, mai di là e là. sola e per noi il tempo si fermerà tu sarai sempre regina e Dio il tuo re L'invidio turista che arrivi, l'imbevi dei fori e dei scavi, poi tutto ad un tratto te trovi, fontana dei trevi che tu c'è sta una leggenda romana legata a sta vecchia fontana per cui se ci butti un soldino può stringere il destino a fatte tornare e mentre il sordo bacia il fontanone la sua canzone in fondo è questa qua Arriba 